Where's the kryptonite? Don't worry. We got it. I want it. You're not very trusting. In the Batman Superman team up, we tried to make Superman a little more distant, a little more alien. This is a guy who is pretending to be a human being, you know? So <laughs> that's the attitude we went for. And Batman is the one who is more open. You know, let's team up, let's get together, let's work together. I have this idea. And Superman really has not that much interest in Batman whatsoever. I think I should pay Luthor a visit. Maybe we both should. He's not much for conversation, is he? Like you should talk. I think the main reason that the Superman Batman team ups work so well is that there's such a great contrast between these characters. Superman obviously is is more, uh, you know, even just visually, he's very colorful, he's very, you know, forthright. Whereas Batman, of course, is classically, you know, a dark character that's in the shadows and very, very secretive and, and more of a detective. So their qualities really sort of balance with each other, and they make something greater when they team together. They're just a really mythic team up. Designing all the characters for this new season and the past seasons has been like a dream come true to me. Especially this season since we got the chance to introduce Superman and new heroes from the DC Universe. I was very lucky in the sense that I had a lot of freedom in designing Superman. As a point of reference for me to design him, I think I was looking more into like the original Superman movie, Christopher Reeves and that sort of theme and that sort of universe, you know, the vibe. I wanted to keep him elegant. I wanted to keep them looking powerful and strong at the same time. You know, I always want to make sure that it stays true, you know, red cape, blue suit, S on the chest. I stayed away from like the S on the cape. I did do the curl on the head. I think that's one of the trademarks that do you have to be there. Now, tell me about this justice team of yours. League, Justice League, told the Martian it sounded like a ball club. Finally! I searched the whole city. It took me over an hour to find this place. Easy, kid. I'm on your side. Flash is one of my favorite, very favorite DC characters. Maybe next to Batman, he might have been my favorite comic when I was a kid. And I liked the Mirror Master a great deal. I wanted to do a Mirror Master story from the beginning. I brought him back in 1984 in the Super Friends series for a show which was similar to this show in the fact that people were being moved into a mirror world. But uh, Steve did something completely different with it for this show. And mirror Master is not easy because you'd have to draw mirrors and with the images moving in each mirror. And it's, he's a tough character for Saturday morning animation. And it worked, out, it worked out really well. If we knew what he wanted, we could figure out how he intends to get it. Maybe he's building the world's ugliest chandelier. What are you doing? Pacing. Helps me think. The Batman um, Flash team up is kind of interesting. I mean, those two characters in a lot of ways, they're so different. The way that Superman and, and Batman fit together like puzzle pieces, I would say Flash and, and Batman sort of go by each other, you know, in, physically and figuratively. So they're not really teamed up so much as they're working concurrently. You know, obviously we played him quite comedically, which initially I was a little nervous about that, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. For the design of the Flash, we wanted to stay with the traditional costume. The full red suit, the electric swoosh in the chest, you know, the little wings on the head. We kept them slim. You want to make sure that he feels like he's super fast and he's not too bulky because, you know, if he's too big, it might seem like he doesn't be able to move super fast. So. We wanted to stay with the current version of it. Everything's back to normal. Thanks. I should be thanking you. If you hadn't grabbed that portal ray... It was an impulsive move. Something I learned from you. Arrow? It's me, Batman. Robin, this is Green Arrow. Yeah, the arrows and the greenness kind of give it away. Originally, when we were talking about the Green Arrow show, I think we wanted to play up the similarities and the fact that Batman was irritated that his ideas were being usurped. Because, you know, Green Arrow is sort of a knockoff of a Batman. Although in the, what, the 70s, they made him uh, ultra-liberal. 
and he fought for social causes. And there's that edge to him in our show. People are getting sick around here, and it's because of that dirtbag Bruce Wayne. Dirtbag? If some kind of illness is being caused by Wayne Labs, I guarantee you Bruce Wayne doesn't know about it. Bet he does. And I know who he's working with, too. And Stan Berkowitz, who wrote three of the shows this season, I wrote that one. He's one of the darker writers of Saturday Morning. Green Arrow and Batman are the two closest to comic heroes you can get. Green Arrow, even as a child, I said, hey, you know, Green Arrow's just Batman with a, with a bow and arrow. This is cool. Gives you distance. <laughs> The arrows are really batarangs. I mean, they move a little faster and a little straighter and a little further, but they still are batarangs. I used Robin to, to sort of point out the differences between the two. Otherwise, I think they might have been too similar. They, they had similar motivations. For the design of Green Arrow, we wanted to stay with the more traditional version of him, you know, the green suit, the, you know, blonde goatee and the mustache with the little, like, Robin Hood had uh, obviously you have your, your bow and arrows you know so a lot of that stuff is stay true to what the fans know about him with a lot of these characters we wanted to stay as true to the to the most traditional versions of them you know we want to make sure that when when the fans look at the show you know we don't give them something completely new and something that they're you know maybe they're not familiar with over here guys <laughs> Come on. Green Lantern, you're really here. I am such a fan. The idea of the Green Lantern story was that in desperation, Hal has to send his ring to Batman for protection because he can't keep from having it taken by uh, Sinestro. Sinestro's beating him up so much. Find Batman safe with him. There were some internal discussions about how m much Batman should handle the ring. And the thing is, Penguin handles it, but it's pretty badly because he just can't keep in control of it. But Batman is a guy of tremendous willpower, so he should be able to handle the ring. But if he handles the ring with ease, then what's the purpose of Hal Jordan? And we decided that we would just, we would limit the handling of the ring by Batman a lot. In the script, there was even less than what ended up on film because the storyboard artists decided that they would, they wanted something with Batman and the ring. So how was it, using that ring? Not my style. The really fun part uh, for, uh, for us with uh, Green Lantern and, and, and Batman and that team up is that, you know, Green Lantern of all the characters, maybe excepting Superman, he's such a bigger than life character and he's off on galactic adventures all the time and he's on Earth part of the time and he walks with a certain arrogance being a cocky test pilot. So we thought the fun part with that was the way that Robin sort of hero worships Green Lantern I think really is a great way of, of setting up the contrast between the two characters. It was just fun to see Batman actually get a little bit, a little bit jealous of this. With the design for Green Lantern, we wanted to stay true to the more iconic version of them is, you know. We have the, the green suit with the, the black uh, sleeves, the white gloves, obviously the Green Lantern logo on the chest. We also did this cool little effect around him, this little green glow when he flies around and he's supercharged and he's using his ring to fight Sinestra. <laughs> I must admit, I underestimated you. Really? As a matter of fact, I think we're a lot alike. You mean stubborn? I was going to say we have enormous willpower, but stubborn works too. I'm impressed. Your setup here is not that much different from police headquarters back on Thanagar. More Earthbound, of course. The team-up that I worked on um, specifically was the Batman Hawkman episode. And we have the history, you know, the whole thing with Thanagar and stuff like that. There was all this backstory. Tried to incorporate that at the start, but realized, you know, we just don't have time. So instead, let's just, you know, have the dynamic of Hawkman. Who is he? We played him as like an international policeman who's come to take care of Shadow Thief, which is in the, the episode. 
We approached him as literally like a professional police officer from this other planet. To me, Hawkman is a is sort of, he's a really fun action character. You know, the way he swings that mace around, he sort of naturally fell into almost like a swashbuckling barbarian type of figure. And, and so we had a lot of fun with that. Can someone tell me what Shadow Thief thought he was doing? Keeping us away from the real crime. Huh? Anyone need a lift? I had this idea, since we we're going to be in the air with Hawkman, that, that the villains actually steal a building and, and lift it away. And then uh, while it's being taken away, Batman and Robin get in the building, and the technology that's being used suddenly starts going awry, and the building starts to turn. So you have a fight in a turning building. Suddenly it hit me, and I just said, yes, this is a, this is a 6 to 11-year-old idea. This is perfect for my audience. Let's go with this. For the design of Hawkman, I wanted to make this huge, massive guy that, you know, he'll be able to hold up this enormous wings that he has, you know, on his back. We wanted to make him very powerful. I think Hawkman is maybe not one of the most used heroes in animated versions of the DC Universe, but, you know, we had a lot of fun designing him for the show. The Radiant Analyzer shows one element unknown to Earth with anti-gravity properties I've never seen before. I have. It's called the Nth Element. It's part of my suit. It's what gives me my strength and flying powers. It's incredibly potent and unstable. If this is what they're after, all of Gotham is in jeopardy.